This offense is literally taking over Madden 24. It's a brand new formation that they put into the game this year. And we're going to show you why I believe it is the best standalone offense in Madden 23. Now, for the sake of the video, uh, I am not going to have Reggie White on the field because he will literally ruin the entire video. So we're going to go... Uh, with just some of the basics here, uh, basic coverages, and we're going to break down why this offense is really good. Now, uh, this is in the Jets playbook. If you want to get my full ebook on this, it's in the Patreon. It's completely optimized. It's so good. Um, I probably spent about 15 to 20 minutes breaking down each play and why they're good and what they do. So this is going to be a little bit more of a simple version of that, but it's just going to be walking you through uh, what we're looking for with this offense. Now, for audibles, what you want to do is you want to have dagger in your number one slot. Everything else is pretty good. And then you're going to be coming out in the play corner strike. All right. So the corner strike is our base play. This is known as the double corner play. You're just going to slot apprentice corner your slot receiver. You're going to streak your tight end, block your running back, or put him on a route if you want. And then you can drag this receiver here on the left. If they're in cover three or cover four, this is... Uh, short corner is going to get in a really soft spot. Pretty much very, very few zones guard it. The only zone that really guards it well is going to be a cover two cloud flat, okay? So what your opponent might do is they might try to go to cover two to take away the short corner, and they go to cover two to take away the short corner. But now your deeper corner route, because you put your tight end on a streak, your deeper corner route is going to be able to get open. Now, all of these setups, really important, are going to be ran to the wide side of the field, okay? So as you can see here, the ball is on the left hash mark. Every single time we want our bunch to the wide side of the field because that is more space for our routes to develop. So if the ball is on the right hash mark, you want to run your bunch to the left side of the field, or you want to flip everything that I'm saying. If the ball's in the middle of the field, you want to run the RPO read bubble. So the RPO alert screen is really effective. And basically what you're looking for here is if there's no, you're just looking out to the right. If you feel like you can throw that RPO, then you're just going to hit circle and pass lead outside. That's all you're going to do. Now, the cool part about this run, a lot of people sleep on, but basically default, they're going to hand the ball off. So if I don't do anything, you'll see here, they're going to hand the ball off. So what I like to do is I like to hold it to the last possible second to throw the bubble screen. I think that it just lets the blocks develop a little bit more. So if you'll see here, I'm going to wait, 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 and now throw it. And as you can see, I get a little bit better blocking downfield when I do that. Now, the other thing about this run play is you can uh, basically steer it either way. So like I can cut it back right in here, right in this little gap. I love this play just for situational run, running. And again, this is pretty much the play that I'll start almost every drive out with because I'm trying to get on a hash mark so that I can run all my setups to the wide side. So that's the RPO or bubble. It's a great little constraint theory play. Uh, just does a lot for the offense. We know how good RPOs are this year. And this one is one of the better ones in the game. All right, so for our next setup here, we're going to be going over the play Durham. Durham is an absolute masterful play. It counters the double corner play really, really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our slot, slot receiver on a slot apprentice post, streak our running back, and drag your tight end. Our first read is if they're not putting hard flats out here, we always want to throw the ball to that um, that that slot receiver or that outside bunch receiver. So the kind of the mainstay adjustment that a lot of people like to do when they're defending this formation is they'll put a vert hook to this guy, they'll put this guy on a cloud to go get the short corner route. And then they'll probably like have a middle third here. And then on this left side, it typically is going to be a hard flat. And this is kind of like the standard way that somebody would set up defense for this. Well, if you look out here to the left side, there's no hard flat defender to the right. So because there's no hard flat defender to the right, this little quick flat is really, really, really good. Now you do want to practice the timing of this and the pass lead. I recommend pass leading down and outside for the best results. If you try to pass lead just straight horizontal, or if you try to just bullet pass it in general, they will overthrow it. So it's something you need to kind of lab, but the route is available to you and is one of the best routes in this formation. So you might think, okay, Cody, how do they stop that? Well, what they're going to do is they're going to have to hard flat. So this guy's going to have to be in a hard flat or he's going to have to be manned up on B, okay? What that's going to do is then they're going to, you know, drop this guy in a purple because they got to be able to contain the sideline, right? So now there's limited amount of people that they could have in a yellow zone. That's the whole purpose of this offense. So what you'll see now is this defender is going to be put in no man's land. That's the whole purpose of this concept. And basically what they're going to have to do is you're just reading what the user does. Does the user go to the post or does the user go to the... Uh, the running back route. So what you'll see here 
most of the time they're going to go to the running back route at least late in the play so your post is going to get open and guess what they're going to have to do to stop that post they're going to have to have a cloud flat defender to stop that post they're going to have to have a, a cloud flat defender that is coming from their safety position or that is backed off in the slot so if you ever see somebody do something like this and they have these guys in backed off clouds then what you're able to do and this is why this concept i think is just so good for the offense what you're going to see is now I got the flat early on the right, but I also have this flat on the left. The drag route will kind of turn into a flat route to the left-hand side. This play is also really good against man-to-man -man coverage, okay? So man-to-man -man coverage, I don't get a lot of man coverage this year, but if you ever do get man coverage, this play does a really good job of attacking it because you have three routes that are always going to pretty much win. The drag wins, the running back wins. That post is winning. He just got bumped because practice mode is awesome. Uh, but anyway, as we can, it would be great if the game would let us throw the ball. So you have the drag post running back streak. A lot of times, pretty much everybody that I play, they they understand that the running back streak is one of the best. If they're, I mean, again, like a, a little bit more advanced players, but they, they inherently understand that they cannot let you just throw this running back streak up the middle of the field. So they got to have safety help here. They also have to have safety help over here so they can defend the uh, the deep fade route that's going to be able to beat press man-to-man. -man. So this is going to allow us now to either work the tight end underneath right there, or if we can wait on this and we can hit this slot post over the middle of the field for a pretty easy gain. So this play is really good against both man and zone coverage. Now, the next play we're going to be talking about is kind of a, a bomb or man-specific play, and there are a couple setups for this. The first one is the man-to-man -man version of this play, and all we're going to do is put the running back on a wheel route and motion him to the left side of the screen. This is our main play that I like to use if someone is running man coverage because it literally beats every kind of man coverage. So you're going to look to the left. If that's not available to you, then you want to look as I'm getting just randomly bumped. This is the problem with practice mode. It is not the same as the regular game. And they make it so that practice mode, for whatever reason, uh, will bump like nobody's business. So we'll show this again because that was a bad rep. So... Again, just put the running back on a wheel. Now, there's a we have another setup that we'll go over that will be just you know will be fine as well. But I'm just going to recreate it. But I just want to show you the main thing here. So the main thing is, I'm getting screened up. That's crazy. Uh, the the drag to the tight end. The drag to the tight end to the post is the main read. Now, what I like to do with this is I like to peek out to the running back to see if he if he wins. A lot of times, what this does is they're going to have to have this guy in a half. If you're playing someone that's pressing a lot, they're probably going to be in a defensive shell that looks something like this with their user over the middle of the field, right? Pretty much standard. So if they do that, you've got a lot of options. And basically you're just reading wheel. No. Okay. Drag. No. Trail route. No. Post. I had the post right up the middle for a touchdown. Okay. So that's pretty much the standard progression that I like to run with this. Also, just please, like I said, understand the fact that the random bumping in practice mode uh, does not do this play justice. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time breaking this down. But what I want you to mainly see is the drag to the trail is really good against man. And then also your post. You can smart route that post on the left, make it run a little sharper. So you see here, now that nobody doesn't get bumped, the drag is going to be wide open to the left, as you can see. So your drag's open, your trail route's open. Those are routes you have. Now, the other cool part about this play, like I said, is that it just beats every man coverage that they can pretty much run. So what we have here is we're able to attack deep over the top on the left. And then I'm just, like I said, just going to recreate it. But what you'll see is now we have this. And if you look, look to the right side, the corner route, again, practice mode's not doing this route justice, but a lot of times you see how he gets a step over the top of the defender. You can freeform and high point that route over the top of that man coverage. Now, at the sake of being too uh, redundant with, uh, with that route combo against man coverage, I want to show you another route combo in case you just can't get this to work. <laughs> um, so it, it, in case you just can't get this to work, what I like to do is drag the slot, flat the outside bunch receiver, and wheel the running back. Now, this is really, really important. You can, if you want to, just block and release the running back or block him. Uh, if, you, if you feel like you're getting a man-to-man -man blitz, and again, what's your read? Drag to trail route to post every single time, okay? But let's say you're tired of the raining bumping in practice mode and you just want to throw your free touchdown. 
you'll see right here, when the running back cuts up field, that guy is going to have a really hard time. Of course, he's able to defend it. He's going to have a really hard time stopping the route. He really is. Okay. I promise you, he will. Most people don't play man to man against this because it's basically a free touchdown. Um, you do have to kind of see that like the way this is lining up, it's just not right. Normally what's going to happen if they are going to play man coverage is this guy would be man up on the running back. This guy would be man up maybe on the tight end. They would be usering here. Typically uh, would be what they would do. Rarely are you going to get a cross man all the way across the field. And we already showed that Durham just absolutely destroys that. So just keep that in mind. But in general, if they run man coverage, you see how he's going to get that step on him. And then he gets over the top, and now it's a big play for you. So most of the time, guys, this is going to be a really easy read for you against man. Now, I did want to go over, so what do they have to do to stop the wheel route, or what do they have to do to stop the corner route? They have to deep half this guy, which is really, really important, because to stop the streak out of Durham, what do they have to do? They have to deep half this guy. So a lot of people, when they play you in man-to-man, -man, they're going to play you almost like a cover-to-man type of defense, right? So when you go to this setup right here, What's going to happen is that wheel is going to pull that half to the outside, and then you're going to have this post right in the middle of the field for a big play against man coverage. So again, and then and then of course the user is if the user goes to the post, then you're going to have your uh, drag or your trail route. So there's just a lot of reads on this play that are really really effective uh, against man to man coverage, and and we haven't even shown you how good this drag is, but. This drag really is just a really good route. As you see, the running back just absolutely just destroyed him. And then, um, wow, Megatron, go make a play. But anyway, this play is really, really good against man. I wouldn't say it's the best play in the world against zone coverage, but you still have stuff. Uh, but I, in general, would be in Durham or Y Trail or our next play against zone. So I did want to show our next play against man first because I did want to give you guys just a couple of other options if they are... Uh, just spamming man coverage. For some reason, in all Madden, I've been seeing a little bit more man coverage than I would like to see. But anyways, how do we attack this? This is the play dagger. The only adjustment we need to do is we're going to put the slot receiver on a slot apprentice crosser. Now, if you are getting a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, what you can do is wheel your running back because there's no other route over there. We're just going to isolate this running back. And what you're going to see is a lot of times... As a, and of course, I went to cover two man, so it's not going to work. But a lot of times, if there's no if there's no deep zone over there, right, uh, the running back's going to be wide open. Okay, so that's just something you have to you know kind of trust me on a little bit. But I mean, this has been one of the best man beaters in Madden, you know, all year long. Just a simple running back wheel, and you'll see. I mean, even this, like you see here, see see what I'm talking about? Touchdown or at least big play. So running back wheel is a key feature of the offense if they are running a lot of man coverage. If they're not running a lot of man coverage, I would not run a lot of running back wheel routes this year. They're not that great against zone, and the running back um, the running back streaks are significantly better. So how do we set this up against uh, standard defense? We're just going to block the running, block the running back, and we're just going to make a read. And what you'll see here is this crossing route. This is, we're getting all cluttered up. This is kind of really the bumping in practice mode I did not realize just how brutally bad it, it really is. So I'm going to deep half over here on the left. This guy is in no man's land. So what we're going to do here, I don't even know. Like, we'll just blitz this guy, and then we'll man this guy up on the running back. I don't know. The the way the, the way they're coding the, the man coverage is kind of wonky. But basically, your crosser uh, is going to win. And then <laughs> the bumping is actually crazy, boys. The bumping is actually crazy. If you get man coverage, you better be in wide trail. <laughs> you better be in wide trail because they have just broken how man coverage works fundamentally in practice mode. Okay, so real quick, I did want to cover this just so you can see this. So we, you know, I'm not crazy. Look to the left. You see how he pretty much wins almost every time, right? So what do they have to do? They have to put that guy in a third or they have to put a half over the top, right? So let's say they put a half over the top. Well, guess what we have? Number one, we have wide trail. So how do they stop wide trail? Well, we got to have a guy here or we have to user it, right? Which is what's probably going to happen. So our user is going to go back here. So this will clear out the middle a little bit better for us. So you can actually see what we're talking about. Okay. So the slot receiver on the crosser normally is going to win. Uh, the drag normally is going to win and the in route is normally going to win. Okay. In practice mode, like I said, they just play man coverage on steroids in practice mode. I don't know why it's kind of been that way for the last two Maddens. Um, 
But anyway, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, this play is really good against zone, uh, which is what makes it special. So what you're going to do here is this is just a high-low to the left side. So what you'll see, and of course, why wouldn't we be back in man coverage? I thought I audible to zone, but I audible to man. So <laughs> you can't make this up. All right. So uh, zone coverage, all we're doing is we are slot apprenticing this guy. Okay. So you look here, fade, not open, drag, not open. But what is open? The crossing route. So we throw the crossing route. Okay. Now I did want to spend just a quick second or, or two here. And I wanted to just talk about how you throw this crosser so that that does not happen. Um, that is really important. And it's honestly something that I'm not the best at, but I know how to do it. And I just need to get more reps with this. So what you're going to see here is we're just going to, we're not free forming it. We're just going to pass lead down. And we're going to ag back to the ball. So we're, we're just pass leading down into the left side. And then we're agging back to the ball. We don't want a ton of pass lead on this ball because we want to basically dive it underneath that quarter, which is a really hard throw this year, but it is a really good throw. And it's a throw that's going to open up your offense if you can master this. So you'll see here, just pass lead down, ag it right in front of him, and you see he will not activate. Now let's talk about some adjustments that they can do defensively to this, as well as some of our other plays. So one of the adjustments they're going to do, or they're going to try to do, is they're going to put this guy in a cloud, this guy in a hard flat, and then this guy in a middle third, right? So what's open? If you just look at this play right here, um, and let's say this guy's backed off, what's open here? Well, Durham is wide open to the right-hand side, right? So how would they defend that? Well, their user here is in, in the middle of the field. So how could they possibly defend Durham? And they, they, they can't, right? That's the point. So uh, just keep that in mind as we're looking at this. And I just wanted to show you one really cool little feature of this crossing route. It's kind of back to bunch a little bit. But in general, what you're going to see is this crossing route will clear a cloud flat right on the sideline. And you can throw it right on the sideline over there to the left. So if they are trying to put like a safety uh, in a cloud, just understand like you have an option. And then this hook curl typically is, is he might be there. He might be blitzing, but what their user can no longer carry the crosser there. He's going to have to basically bite down on this in route or we'll be able to throw the in route. And I'll cover that in just a second, but we'll just assume that he's going to uh, basically, you know, obviously in the fact that we have Durham as well in our playbook. But if you look at this throw right, right here, you can kind of, eh, you can kind of fit it in there. Um, and then I'll show you how you can actually throw it over the cloud as well. Let's see if we can get this set up for you. But but there's just a lot to cover here. And 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 again, they're going to have to have a very specific set of adjustments. And when they when they have those set of adjustments, they are going to be vulnerable to one of your other plays. So you can literally run these five plays pretty much all game long, as you see here. Throw it on the sideline. I wish you could catch the ball. But anyways, uh, that's, it's, it's wide open. Madden is, Madden is Madden right now. It's being kind of wonky. Um, Praxmo is being kind of wonky. And that cloud flat is getting a crap ton more depth than he will in-game. Okay? But anyways, in general, if that's covered, the tight end is going to be open. Like I said, just pass it down. That's what I'm looking for right there. That is what I've been trying to show you the whole time. So as you can see, the cloud flat will bite down at the very end of the route. You can throw it right on the sideline, and that's going to be uh, a dot. So you throw that a couple of times, right, and your opponent is going to be like, oh, crap, I've got to go take the crosser route. So the opponent has to go take the crosser route, and we'll set up even some other covered shells. Like this would be a better covered shell if that was the case because this actually would defend Durham, for example, right? Um, but it wouldn't defend the running back, but it would defend parts of the play Durham. The reason I'm showing you this is because when you go to the play dagger, you have this little uh, delayed kind of crossing route to the tight end, this little baby in route as a great little check down on this play. This offense is incredible. It's truly, in my opinion, the best standalone formation in Madden 24. I hope that you enjoyed this little breakdown on the five best plays out of Bunch Strong Offset this year, and hopefully you can apply them to your game. Thanks for watching. If you want to get my full ebook on this offense, the link is going to be down in the description below.